Hey YouTube, so I'm going to do a quick tutorial today about how to record your vinyl to the computer without using a USB turntable. I'll be using my standard uh, techniques SLD3. This is uh, quite an old turntable. doesn't have a USB output and um, I'm going to show you how to input it into your computer and record your music um, to not only get a better sound quality, but also um, not have to go purchase a USB turntable. Okay, so I'm going to switch angles here a little bit. Um, this idea came up for this video because recently my uh, neighbor uh, asked me to, if I could record some jazz albums of his to digital. And he said, oh, well, you don't have a USB turntable, so you wouldn't be able to do that. I said, actually, yeah, I can. Um, all you really need is one of these. So it's going to have like a, let's see if I can get this focus. You're going to plug that into your computer and it's going to give you an input for a stereo. And then what you do is you unplug your uh, stereo from where your turn, or excuse me, your turntable is going to be going into your uh, stereo unit and Instead of plugging it in the air to hear it out of your speakers, you unplug that and you're going to plug it into the cord that you're going to plug into your computer. So if you're using, a, a, just like my, I'm using here, if you're using a phono uh, preamp, you're still going to want to run your cables through your preamp and then the output from the preamp to your stereo, uh, you're going to want to use this. So in my computer, and you'll see the pop-up screen here, I have a kind of like an all-in-one input. This is a Windows computer, a Dell. So when I plugged it in, you can see this window popped up because it, it looks like a headphone jack in, but when I but it's kind of like an all-in-one, meaning I can plug in a mic, I can plug in a line in, I can plug in a microphone, or excuse me, a headphone jack. Um, and it's pretty much detecting that this is a line in jack, so I'm gonna go ahead and select line in and hit OK. Now, some of your computers are going to have a separate headphone jack, separate microphone jack, separate line-in jack. Um, I, I'm, I can't really, I, I don't, I mean, I have no idea which computer you're using, so you're going to have to make sure your computer does have a line-in feature, which most of them do, so that shouldn't be a problem. Next thing you're going to want to do is download a program called Audacity, and I'll put a link uh, below for y'all. It's a free program, and it's A-U-D-A. C-I-T-E. It typically comes with most uh, USB computers, or excuse me, USB turntables um, as the re default recording software. It's very simple to use, uh, but again, it's free, so you don't have to have a USB turntable to get this program. You just go to their website and get it. So I am now connected from my vintage turntable into my computer. Um, that simple. It just you just use the cable and plug it in. This cable probably cost you five to ten dollars on Amazon, instead of spending sixty dollars up, you know, to get a turntable with the USB output. And in my opinion, you're using you're getting a much lesser quality turntable than what you probably um, have at your house if you have like a vintage turntable like this or a little bit more. Um, advanced turntable you're going to want to use that because you're going to get much better sound out of it on your uh, digital quality so now it depends on uh, what you want to record so i just have this willie nelson record um, on the turntable right now it's a stereo record um, so let me kind of get in here okay so you have downloaded audacity you have hooked up your turntable to your computer and when you open Audacity, you've got to kind of set it up to make sure it's going to record properly. So the first thing you want to do is select your line in option. So I'm going to use Realtek Audio on this computer. This is now going to be pulling the audio. Basically, it's going to be recording what it hears from this device. Now, if, if you have a... You're going to want to check a stereo or mono input or a recording. So for this case, I'm going to be recording a Willie Nelson album that is a stereo, so I'm going to select stereo. Now, if I was going to record Beatles in mono, I would choose mono. 
Um, pay attention to that specifically because if you record a stereo album to mono, mainly that will be a big case where it doesn't sound right. It's going to come out in just one channel. So it's really important to make sure you got that right. So choose stereo for this option. And then from this point, you just start the record. So I'm going to start the album. And I usually go ahead and just record. Just let it ride. You can go back and edit this later. That way you don't miss anything. And see, it's going to, it's going to literally going to record everything it hears. So there it goes. You hear the, that little flicker at the beginning there is the record uh, then starting and the needle scratching. And you can see that it's picking up sounds. And then and there's where the start of the album is, where it really starts to come in. What I usually do is I will record each side of the whole album. Instead of trying to break up the tracks this way, like literally stop the song and then start the song. It's too complicated to do it that way. What I do is I'll record the whole side of an album and then do a second project and record a second side of the album and then go back and edit the tracks out, which I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But as you can see, it's getting the left and right input coming from the stereo. It's recording. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's recording exactly how it hears. Um, and yeah, this is, it's that simple. Instead of uh, having to go out and buy a USB turntable and spending all this time and money to do that and honestly not get a good of a quality. We're now recording it straight from our uh, home stereo turntable and um, it's that simple. So I'm going to now switch gears and we'll start showing you how to edit the tracks. Okay, so we're going to do a quick tutorial on how to edit the file that you just recorded from your vinyl to your computer. Um, this is just a quick sample of how to do that. A couple of quick things. If you what you're looking at is is the digital what what the the Audacity program heard and recorded. Um, if you want to zoom in and out, you go up here to these little magnifying glasses, and if you do the minus, it's going to zoom out. So this is going to we're going to zoom out to see the whole file that I recorded, which you can see is about a two minute file zoom back in to get to a specific spot. So I'm going to kind of narrow this down so you can kind of see where I put the, I turn, I started recording here and then right about this point is when the needle touched the vinyl. And then this about this point is where the, uh, the actual music started playing. So I'll go ahead and play this. We'll, if you want to go to the very beginning and start the audio clip, you'll go to this little button here, which is skip to start. It's going to take you all the way back to the beginning. And then just hit play and it's going to play out. So you'll hear the crackle right here where my needle drops in. And then about right at this point right here, you're going to hear the music start playing. Now this is a live album, so more right about around this point is where you'll hear some chatter from the audience. But the music starts playing right there, just like that. So let's say you want to get rid of all that extra crap at the beginning here that um, we recorded while we were letting the player uh, queue up the album. Um, I'm going to start, like I said, the chatter kind of starts at about the, I don't know, 18 or 19 second mark. So I'm going to go ahead and start it at 18 seconds. Let's start, let's just delete out everything up to 18 seconds. So I'm going to click on this guy right here. And what you all you have to do is... Oh, I hit a button accidentally. I don't want it to play anymore. Let's go to 18 seconds. I don't know why I keep I keep having to play. And then just click this little scissors right here, and it'll cut it. Now it's asking you to select audio to cut. So all you really is just drag it back all the way to the beginning, cut it, and it's done. So now when you go back to skip to start and start at the beginning and you play it, it's going to start right at the where the song should play. Okay, so next thing is, let's say you want to just export the album, meaning you do not care about splitting up tracks. Um, you don't care about 
having individual tracks. You just wanted to record your one side of the album and listen to it like that. Okay, so all you have to do at this point is you have to go File, Export. And this is where you're going to actually export the what you're seeing here to a file that you can listen to on your MP3 player or iPod or whatever it may be. Me personally, I like exporting it to Wave. Wave is uncompressed. It's uh, going to get you the most accurate sound quality from ex almost exactly a duplicate of what the program heard. Um, the problem with Wave is the file sizes are much larger than MP3. So um, that's up to you to do that. But I prefer Wave. But if you want to just go straight to MP3, you can just go export to MP3. And that's what I'm going to do today because that's the majority of what people are going to want to do. So in some cases, when you go to export MP3, it's going to require you to download an additional um, uh, file. So it'll allow, you, allow the program to export and um, compress the file. So you'll have to go through that step. And unfortunately, I don't have that right here. So just follow the prompts. It'll tell you exactly where to go to download the, the um, attachment for the program. So you can see I've recorded a few, you know, Aqua Lung and a couple other um, albums to here. And I'm just going to title this Willie. And down here, you can choose the quality. So I like to do the highest quality, but you know, if you don't want to use, and, and it's all based on file size. So uh, traditionally albums are probably on like iTunes and stuff are probably in this ballpark here. I think actually they do go to 320. So, I mean, I, I recommend just sticking with 320, but again, if you're worried about file size, you know, you may want to go down to standard or extreme, but um, let's pick 320 kilobytes per second. And then, um, you just, we saved it as Willie MP3 file, so let's do save. You can go in and edit the artist name. So if you want to do Willie Nelson, track tile, we'll just name it test side one. Willie and friends live. Track number, let's just do uh, one year 2018 country comments whatever you want to put on their comments hit okay and there it's going to export the audio so from this point you can just close the program or you can save this project meaning what it means by project is it'll save this as a project file that you can reopen in audacity let's say you want to edit it later uh, just go in there and save project as and then you can save see and it's telling you right here this isn't an audio file this is just a project you are, we know this, and then you can just name it Willie. And that's it. It'll save it. So let's say you want to close this out, uh, and then you want to open down the road. You want to open some, you open Willie again. You just go down to Willie, and it'll open your project again. And then also. Audacity, let's do a search. Go to the Audacity folder where I just saved all this at. Here's your Willy MP3. And let's open this in iTunes. I will do, yeah, let's do my iTunes. Most common program. Just showing this, I'm, I'm walking through all this just to be sure that, you know, I don't miss anything. Everybody can see that I just did this recording and you're able to play it properly. And there he is playing right there. Test side one, see how it has Willie Nelson. It has everything we typed in and it's playing it. So as you can see, that was pretty really simple. So the only other thing I really would I'm going to go over today to get you off and running is doing tracks. Meaning, let's say you want to split tracks up. So you want to break down each song. Now I only recorded two minutes of this recording, so I I'm not going to accurately do tracks. Meaning for that specific album, but I'm just going to kind of make up tracks. So let's say at the 30 second mark, um. That is where track one ends and track two begins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight everything from this point back. 
and I'm going to cut it just like we did before. And then what you want to do is just do new and then paste it. Or if I hit control V, it's in Victor. Uh, it should paste the track. So as you can see, if I zoom out here, it's just 30 seconds, just like the one I just cut. And then you just do exactly what you just what we just did to save it. But now you're going to save it as like track one of the song name. So you want to do export MP3. And then let's name this, you know, Willie track one. You know, keep the same. Uh, sound quality, save it, and then you'll just do the same thing, just Willie Nelson. But this track title would be whatever the first track is. So this is uh, album title, Willie and Friends Live, track number one. Well, in that last case, we did one, but, you know, you just do one or two, depending on what you're doing. You know, do the year. And that's it. It's really easy. And then once you're done, you export that one. You can save that as a project or you can close this particular track out and go back to your, this is the old project. Oh, wait, see, it just closed me out. So let's go back. So luckily we saved that original. Save your main, always save your main recording as a project just in case something like that just happens where i screw it up and close the whole program out so i can go back and i can open willy back and here's the whole file and then you know we just edit out go to the 30 seconds edit out that track and then what ends up being happening is you end up being left with let's do this here sorry Keep clicking the wrong button here so let's edit out that first track so we exported the, the other track now you're stuck with the rest of the album so let's say at the 20 second mark this is going to be track two so you just go back here cut it new oops excuse me new control victor there's track number two and you can see that this is 20 seconds when i zoom out see it's 20 seconds save it as the third track and then just keep doing that until you're done with the album. So again, this is just takes, it's time consuming in the sense that you got to listen to it. You got to find the stopping point, cut it, put it, paste it into a new project, export the project, and then just go back and forth. And then you're done. It's, and then you'll end up having a bunch of MP3s that are all uh, for that one side and record it. But it, it's very nice because you can edit anything out of it. If you don't like the, there's too much time in between the tracks um you can edit all that out um it's very it's nice to customize it to like like i was saying earlier mono you can customize it to stereo, uh, stereo mono you can customize it to wave mp3 i believe there's all sorts of um attachments that you can get for the audacity program to do all different formats of music to where you can export it out to um you know mp3 wave files um uh, Windows Media, all of those different formats, I believe they have attachments for that. So I hope this helps out. Very, very simple and inexpensive way to record, and in my opinion, a much better quality way to record your vinyl to MP3. And um, it just takes basically one cable to connect to your vinyl, uh, to excuse me, to your turntable to do so. So hope everybody enjoys that. I hope it helped out. I hope it saves you some money. And if you have any questions or if I missed anything, please uh, leave a comment below and let me know and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. But as always, I appreciate y'all watching and you have a great day.